On the 23rd of January 2014, five-year-old Garnet Spears sadly passed away in hospital. He had been fatally poisoned by the one person who was meant to love and protect him, the person in whose care he ought to feel the safest, and the person he should call family, his own mother, Lacey Spears. Why did Lacey Spears murder her own son in such a cruel and evil way? How could she do something so unspeakable to her own child? As the investigation unfolded, the true horror of what happens to little Garnet and his mother's motives behind his murder were revealed. This is the tragic tale of young Garnet Spears, whose life was untimely snatched from him by his own mother, all in a desperate attempt to gain sympathy and attention in the era of social media. Lacey Spears was born and raised in Alabama and quickly showed an interest in children, first working as a babysitter and later at a daycare. When Lacey was 20 years old, she fell pregnant with a man called Chris Hill and on the 3rd of December 2008, her beautiful baby boy was born, called Garnet Paul Thompson Spears. Chris Hill was a neighbour who Lacey briefly dated but Lacey decided to raise Garnet alone, as she claimed that Chris did not want to be part of their lives. Lacey also decided to lie about who Garnet's biological father was, claiming it was a police officer named Blake, who had died in a car accident. Posting on her blog called Garnet's Journey, to corroborate her story, she wrote, We have together survived nearly 365 days, a complete year without Blake, my soulmate and Garnet's daddy. The past year has been the hardest year of my life. Lacey Spears would describe Garnet as a little social butterfly, while others described him as a cute, curious child who loved trains and had a playful personality. Garnet was, he was an amazing little boy. He always had a smile on his face. He laughed a lot, he smiled a lot. He was, he was a fun little guy. He was really a ray of sunshine. Um, he brightened your day just instantly. Lacey found it difficult being a single mother, since Garnet seemed to have so many health issues. He was in and out of hospital for the first nine weeks of his life, something she liked to share on her blog. Lacey said that Garnet suffered from bad ear infections and that he just wouldn't eat. Ultimately, doctors diagnosed Garnet with something called failure to thrive but they could not figure out the reason why he wouldn't eat. Garnet ended up getting an operation, which meant he could not throw up. He then had another operation, to insert a feeding tube, where nutrients could go directly into an opening in the abdomen, either through a hanging bag, a bottle, or through a syringe. Garnet and Lacey moved from place to place over the years, trying to find the best medical help for Garnet, all whilst Lacey chronicled their journey on social media on a blog called Garnet's Journey. When Garnet was three, they moved to Chestnut Ridge in New York, where they stayed in a holistic community called The Fellowship. This was an alternative community where workers lived on the premises, contributed to all aspects of the community, received free room and board, and schooling for children. Lacey thought it would be the ideal atmosphere to raise Garnet. Despite his health conditions, Garnet was said to thrive here and was remembered by members of the community as someone who went around opening people's hearts and who would bring joy to those around him. Garnet still required occasional supplemental feedings through his G-tube, but was otherwise active and seemingly healthy. A year and a half into living at the Fellowship, in January 2014, it all changed when Garnet came down with a supposed fever, stomachache and headache, so Lacey took Garnet to hospital. On the 17th of January 2014, Garnet was admitted into Nyack Hospital in New York by his mother, Lacey Spears, as she reported he had experienced three episodes that she believed to be seizures. Garnet was admitted to the hospital so that an EEG could be performed to rule out a seizure disorder. A video camera was placed facing his hospital bed. 
to record any physical symptoms of seizures that he may exhibit, and it recorded approximately 42 hours of footage. During his first two days in the hospital, the doctors treated him, and he started feeling better. Everything felt like it was returning to normal, and he was declared good to be discharged the next day. Lacey, however, was not happy with this and told them to keep him in longer. On the third day, however, everything changed and took an unexpected turn. Garnet suddenly started feeling worse again. He started dry heaving, complaining of a severe headache, and suffering from diarrhea. Staff at the hospital originally thought these were signs of a seizure. However, the EEG did not show seizure activity, but rather a significant slowing in the brain waves, which suggested a severe brain dysfunction. Blood tests revealed that he had abnormally high sodium and chloride levels. Average levels of sodium are normally around 138, and Garnet's had risen dangerously to an abnormal level of 182. As Garnet could no longer breathe, and his brain was swollen, he was airlifted to Maria Ferrari Children's Hospital. On arrival at the hospital, he was immediately attended to, but the damage to his brain had already been done. He was placed in intensive care under life support, and for the next few days, his condition remained static until the 23rd of January 2014, when he was taken off life support and tragically declared dead. After discovering that Garnet had died from salt poisoning with a spiked sodium level, the doctors at the children's hospital became suspicious of his mother, Lacey Spears, as she was his primary caregiver and they called the police. According to witnesses, a doctor had told Lacey Spears that it was metabolically impossible for Garnet's body to have such high sodium levels, adding something wasn't right. Friends and hospital staff also noticed that Lacey's behaviour was weird following Garnet's death. She wasn't acting like a mother in mourning, but was somewhat bothered about what was being said about the situation. One of her friends said, her behaviour was just weird in the hospital. It was not the behaviour of a grieving mother. She was more concerned about what everyone else was saying, or what investigators were asking people, or what people were saying on Facebook, than putting all that aside and taking care of her child. Pictures that Lacey was putting on Facebook were very hard to look at. As the pictures progressed, you go to seeing this lifeless, child, he's not moving anymore. It was really heartbreaking to see those photos. It was really hard to see that um, because it happened so fast. The investigation also revealed that during the last days of Garnet's life, Lacey was more concerned about taking pictures of the terribly ill Garnet and posting them on social media rather than caring about his health. As the investigation continued, more and more information would come to light. The police had also heard that Lacey had told her friends that she last fed Garnet a week before he ended up in the hospital. However, someone had seen Lacey feed Garnet on the 17th of January, just a few hours before he started experiencing the supposed seizures. But what police found incredibly telling was when they discovered the hours of footage that had filmed Garnet before his death. When looking back at the video, they discovered that the only time Garnet was off camera in his hospital room was when he was in the bathroom of his mother. The video surveillance showed Lacey taking Garnet to the bathroom 17 times, and twice she was seen carrying the feeding bag with her. Following these two instances, the video showed Garnet becoming ill and his condition quickly worsening. The first time was in the morning, and after the visit to the bathroom of his mother, Garnet appears uncomfortable and required the attention of the nurse. Then the second time was later in the day, and about 30 minutes after the bathroom trip, he started gagging and thrashing. With all this information, the police acquired a warrant to search Lacey's home in the Fellowship community. They searched Lacey's home and seized several items, including a bottle of sea salt that was just sat at a table amongst Garnet's medication. Lacey's food was also tested, and her phone and computer were checked. On these devices, the police discovered that Lacey had been researching the effects of salt poisoning online. 
the police also noticed two feeding bags filled with milk, which they initially left behind, as Lacey had told them that Garnet was breastfeeding, so they assumed it was just breast milk. Suspiciously, however, Lacey asked her neighbour Valerie Porsche to go to her flat and dispose of these feeding bags. Valerie decided to hand these bags to the police, and once they were tested, it was revealed that both feeding bags contained an enormous amount of sodium. Each bag had the equivalent of at least 69 small salt packs. According to the county detective, Daniel Carfey said, the amounts of sodium that were in those bags were lethal. When the police questioned Lacey's friends and family and obtained Garnet's medical reports, they soon discovered that during his five years on Earth, he had been hospitalized 23 times over sodium and other related issues. So they decided to delve deeper and talk to his previous doctors to gain more information and hopefully gain an understanding on why Lacey would poison her son. They thought, could this possibly be a case of Munchausen by proxy? Born in 2008, Garnet was a healthy baby, at least for the first few months of his life. Lacey Spears had refused Garnet's biological father, Chris Hill, from having any access to his son. Instead, she made up stories of a police officer named Blake, who was alleged to be the love of her life and Garnet's father, but had passed away before Garnet's birth. All of this was a lie that she had made up to bring sympathy and attention to herself. As mentioned earlier, in 2009, at two and a half months old, Garnet was said to have developed problems with malnutrition and dehydration, causing him not to be able to vomit or take in food properly. According to Dr. Robert Pass of the Children's Hospital of Alabama, he was so severely dehydrated that his tiny two and a half month old body was in shock. However, a test showed that Garnet had an abnormally high level of sodium in his system, and so he was treated and everything went back to normal. But only a few months later, when Garnet was nine months old, Lacey requested that the doctors perform surgery on Garnet, asking them to insert a feeding tube into his abdomen in order to help him feed, as apparently he wasn't eating properly. From the beginning, Lacey made all these claims of that he couldn't eat and he wouldn't keep food down. So the doctors, when they're evaluating a child that young, they have no way of knowing only by what the parents tell them. Meanwhile, she documented his ill health on Facebook, Twitter, and her blog, which she called Garnet's Journey. Several people online genuinely sympathized with her sad situation, which only made her crave more attention. She loved to portray the image of a single mother with a chronically ill child, and with this motivation, she would feed him tea salt, severely causing him to fall sick and be hospitalized multiple times. While looking into this and looking into Lacey's mental state, it appeared that she would make up these stories of grandeur so she could get more sympathy. She would write posts that would tug at people's heartstrings. And that's what she craved. She just craved people to look at her and make her the center of attention. Eventually, when Garnet came of age, doctors advised her to remove the feeding tube as he was performing better. Still, Lacey refused and insisted that he wasn't feeding properly, whereas her neighbors in the fellowship community had noticed otherwise. They had seen Garnet eating properly at dinner. We talked to people that his one friend and Lacey's friend, they would go out to dinner and they were actually in McDonald's one time where he ate the woman's whole meal where she had to buy a, her own second meal because he ate it. But Lacey claimed that he could not keep food down and he couldn't swallow. Every time a doctor asked too many questions or became suspicious, they would move and go to another doctor's office. Five weeks into Garnet's life, one of his doctors documented in medical records that he possibly saw a case of Munchausen by proxy. Munchausen by proxy is a psychological disorder marked by an attention-seeking behavior by a caregiver through those who are in their care. It's a relatively rare behavioral disorder and it affects a primary carer, often the mother. After having been hospitalized 22 times, Garnet was taken to hospital again in January of 2014, since Lacey claimed he was experiencing seizures. 
He was then admitted to Nyack Hospital, where doctors noticed he was normal and didn't experience any seizures during his stay. This is where the surveillance video was set up to monitor and check if he was having any seizures. But during this recording, Lacey was seen taking Garnet to the bathroom 17 times. In two of these instances, she was seen carrying the feeding bag with her. Due to how Garnet reacted afterwards, becoming increasingly ill on these two instances, it was predicted she had administered a highly lethal overdose of salt through his feeding tube, causing him to be uncomfortable and almost immediately fall terribly ill. It was predicted she had even tampered with his feeding tube to increase the flow of tea salt into his body, but this time she had gone too far and Garnet's brain had started to swell. With the damage already done, Garnet went into a coma, causing him to be placed on life support, and on the 23rd of January, he was officially declared dead. Five months after the discovery of the video recording, Lacey Spears was arrested and charged with second-degree murder, first-degree manslaughter, and first-degree endangerment of a child. The police questioned Lacey, who refused to say anything and denied that she had hurt her son. According to Detective Daniel Carfee, Lacey Spears had been instructed not to say anything by her attorney and therefore was uncooperative with the police. On the 2nd of March 2015, 27-year-old Lacey Spears was charged to the State Supreme Court for the second-degree murder, first-degree manslaughter and first-degree endangerment of her son, Garnet Spears. The court heard how Garnet Spears had died suspiciously after a high level of sodium swelling in his brain. They learnt that Garnet had spent most of his short life in and out of hospital due to several unexplained illnesses. The prosecutors would present before the court video evidence that would reveal the shocking truth about Lacey Spears' heinous crime. The courtroom watched the graphic video, and they could see the moment Garnet Spears fell critically ill after coming out of the bathroom with his mother. The prosecutors also brought up the evidence that Lacey had researched the effects of salt poisoning and had even used her son's illness to gain attention on social media and through her blog bringing about the motive for the crime, the unhealthy craving for attention and sympathy. The defence, however, denied this accusation, and Lacey maintained her innocence, claiming not to have poisoned her son, who she claimed to have loved and wanted back. Lacey's lawyers argued that there was no direct evidence linking her to her son's death, and that the cause of his illness and subsequent death was unknown. They said, that Lacey had brought in the feeding bags into the bathroom to clean them and said that there was no proof that she had put salt in them at this point. They also suggested that hospital staff had mishandled Garnet's care, which may have contributed to his death, and they insisted Garnet's death was a medical mistake, with Nyack Hospital at fault. Stephen Reebling said, they changed his diet that caused or exacerbated his stomach problem they didn't give him the necessary medication during the day to combat dehydration. Then they exacerbated the dehydration by giving him a rapid infusion of IV solution. IVs contain sodium solutions, which the defence believed could have contributed to Garnet's condition and death. The defence carried on by saying that Lacey Spears was a hard-working single mother who gave her son unconditional love, therefore asking the judge for a lighter sentence of 15 years minimum to life. While advocating for the maximum sentence, prosecutor Doreen Lloyd characterised Lacey's conduct as inhumane, despicable and evil. Prosecutor Lloyd emphasised that the images captured on the hospital room video recordings, which showed Garnet in excruciating pain after being poisoned with salt, would forever haunt the jurors and anyone who witnessed them. Furthermore, she alleged that Lacey deliberately weaponized the feeding tube, which caused his death. Throughout the trial, Munchausen by proxy was never mentioned. This was because Lacey had actually submitted to a mental examination, and she had not been diagnosed with Munchausen by proxy. Because of this, it was up to Lacey's lawyers, not the prosecution, to raise a psychiatric defence, and her attorneys were going with the defence that Garnet's death was due to the hospital not giving Garnet proper medical care, 
and not about Lacey. Ultimately, on the 8th of April 2015, following a unanimous decision from the jury, Lacey Spears was found guilty of murdering her son and was sentenced to 20 years to life. Justice Robert Neary described Lacey's crime as unfathomable in its cruelty. Despite Munchausen by proxy never being brought up during the trial, Judge Robert Neary did refer to it during the sentencing, saying, Instead of nurturing and protecting a beautiful child, you subjected him to five years of torment and pain. One does not have to be a psychologist to realise you suffer from a mental illness known as Munchausen by proxy. Judge Robert Neary offered her mercy because he believed she suffered from Munchausen by proxy and therefore sentenced her to 20 years to life rather than the maximum of 25. He continued by saying, Do you even realise the magnitude of your crime? By not imposing the maximum sentence and combining punishment with something that you really did not exhibit towards your son, namely mercy. Lacey Spears will be eligible for parole in 2034 and she'll be 46 years old. Following Lacey's conviction, everyone was appalled that she could have done this to Garnet, but they were equally relieved and grateful that justice was finally served. Garnet's father, Chris Hill, was saddened and heartbroken, knowing he never got to see his son before his death. The case, however, significantly raised questions and awareness about the dangers of seeking attention and validation through social media. It acted as an eye-opener to healthcare and caregivers about the mental disorder, Munchausen by proxy. After the trial, the Spears family filed a lawsuit against the hospital where Garnet was treated, claiming that they had failed to properly diagnose and treat his illness, leading to his death. However, a judge dismissed the lawsuit and stated that the hospital staff had provided appropriate care and had not contributed to Garnet's death. The Westchester County District Attorney, Anthony Scarpino Jr., was also satisfied with the judgment of the Appellate Court to uphold Lacey's maximum sentence. In an announcement, he said, I am extremely pleased that the state's highest court has declined to review Lacey Spears' murder conviction, thus bringing greater finality to the jury's judgment and most importantly, justice for Garnet. To this day, Lacey Spears still maintains her innocence and has refused to acknowledge her involvement in the crime. I did not murder my son. I did not hurt my son. I loved my son. She also revealed that the aftermath of this tragic event has affected her badly in prison, as her fellow inmates label her as child killer, and she claims that she's often mistreated. Either way, Garnet Spears suffered the consequences of Lacey's selfish actions and had his life cut short in the cruelest and most senseless way imaginable. I will always remember Garnet seeing him and hearing his laugh and his little blonde, <laughs> his little blonde hair in the sunlight and I won't ever forget that happy little boy that was, you know, sitting in my living room floor pushing a plastic boat across the floor and just loving life. It's so difficult to fathom that a mother who was meant to love and care and protect her child could do something so horrific. It's truly a sad story that resonates with sadness, evil and pain. May Garnet's soul rest in peace and may his memory inspire us to strive towards a world where all children are cherished and protected and where no child ever has to suffer the pain and despair that he endured. <laughs>